when digging into investment opportunities to build out your retirement portfolio, stocks seem to be the most obvious option. But our next guest says that there are several other opportunities that should be considered. Lawrence Sprung, who is the Midland Financial founder and author of Financial Planning Made Personal, joins us now. Great to have you here in studio with us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so a lot of people largely kind of think about stocks and think about kind of the long time horizon that they may have. But you're saying look somewhere else. Where is the top place that you're advising people to look other than stocks? So first and foremost, if you're investing long term, you should be looking at your retirement plan and making sure you're capturing at least your employer match. If you're getting a match from your employer, it's free money. Make sure you're contributing at least that much. And I agree with you, when you hear about investments, people's mindset go immediately to stocks. And it doesn't have to just be stocks. You want to build out a balanced portfolio. And so to Brad's point, kind of what's the, the most attractive alternative? So the whole idea is, and as I talk about in my book, Financial Planning Made Personal, it's really up to each individual to build out an asset allocation that is perfect or right for them. That's going to include stocks. That's going to include bonds. And within stocks, that may include several different types of stocks, large cap, mid cap, small cap. Bonds may include government bonds, international. You also want to look at commodities. That might be a good place for an inflation hedge, right? Or real estate are a good option. So it's not just about focusing on stock. It's, it's building out a diversified portfolio within that retirement plan. One of the things that we think about, too, is the different streams of income that one can set up in order to have their money perhaps generating even more income while they are retired. And so how can one adequately set themselves up for that as they are heading to or getting towards retirement? So the most important thing is to have a plan well in advance of retirement and understand where these income streams are going to come from. Some of that may come from a pension. Some of that may come from a retirement plan. Maybe you went out and bought some real estate. Maybe that's in your DNA to own and operate a piece of real estate that in retirement will be paid off and produce an income stream for you. Maybe it's a business. Maybe you have a small business that's not dependent upon you as an owner. Maybe you can manage it, have other people operate it and receive an income stream from there too. It's a matter of what your risk appetite is, how much income you need to derive in retirement and look at where that's coming from. I'm also curious when you talk about things like real estate or a business, it's sort of daunting in people's minds, right, to, to take on a home mortgage. Are there options that you recommend to people where they can buy a piece of something, for example? Yeah, sure. That's a great point. You know, when it comes to real estate, there's many ways to enter it. And I was just giving you one example. If you're not somebody who wants to be that owner operator, you could look at real estate investment trusts where you're going to own a piece of a portfolio and perhaps get an income stream. If you're even more savvy, there might be private opportunities where you could join other private investors, own a pool of assets, and get an income stream in retirement. There's really a flavor for everyone. It's just a matter of finding what's right for you in terms of what your goals are, your risk profile, and what your time horizon is. I, like many millennials and Gen Zers out there, are monitoring immensely close the future financial status of the Social Security program as well here. And by some of the projections, I mean, we're looking at like 2035 as where they're looking for to not be able to pay out the entirety of some of the benefits that were expected by many people in the workforce. So where should you be backfilling for the absence or what generations should not expect to be able to lean on Social Security? So there's a lot to unpack there, but I, and I don't know if this will make you feel better or worse, but this has been a conversation since I started in this profession 20 plus years ago. I've been hearing about Social Security running out, et cetera. And there have been several iterations, changes that they've made to Social Security in terms of raising the income limit as far as you're paying in. The reality is the vast majority of folks who are retiring are really relying heavily on Social Security. So it's important to the fabric of the country to maintain that um, status of Social Security. So I don't think they're going to you know, get rid of it, but they are going to tweak it. So it's going to be very important for people in your stage, millennials, et cetera, to make sure that they're positioning themselves in a way to have other income streams. And it's a matter of finding what's right, setting up a dividend paying stock portfolio, whether it be real estate, having a side gig, whatever that may be, it's something that they should start considering and more importantly, planning for. So uh, 
As they consider that, um, I, I'm just curious finally about other alternatives, right? Uh, whether it be crypto or wine, which people can invest in, or antique cars or gold coins or whatever, ha what have you. How, and I know you said everybody's different. But I, I think of that as sort of the other basket. How should people be thinking about that basket? So that basket is very wide ranging. And I think there's a difference between, for instance, investing, quote unquote, in crypto or investing in a wine collection, right? I don't think the average person has the ability necessarily to invest in a wine collection unless they're doing it in some kind of private placement and group platform. Crypto obviously is a little more accessible and I think there's different risks involved, right? Crypto is something that they can, in most cases, easily convert to cash, assuming that crypto is still around and viable. Wine, that may be a little less, a little lower ability to convert that into cash or an income stream when that time comes. So I think you have to look at the liquidity factor of these various investments and what fits and what you think is going to be around and viable long term as well. All right. Lauren Sprung, who is the Midland financial founder and author of Financial Planning Made Personal. Thanks so much for joining us here on set. Thanks for having me.